Hi everybody and welcome back to Tim's Tech Corner. Today we're going to deal with an IBM Lenovo ThinkPad K1 running Jelly Bean. Now this particular tablet initially started off as a honeycomb tablet and I sort of didn't like it that much. I thought it was okay. thought it was meh. Kind of hard to describe. It was, it felt like it looked a little bit like the Toshiba Excite even though technically the Lenovo was a earlier generation, so it would have come first. So the technically the Toshiba Excite would have been looking like the ThinkPad, but I had the Excite first. So uh, I thought it was a little bit of a pokey tablet under Honeycomb. I thought it ran okay, but not stupendous. And then I rooted it, and it was a very, very easy route, as easy as the Nexus 7. It was basically like a one-click method. And once I brought it up to Jelly Bean, this tablet has been very good. It, it's really picked up in terms of its usability. So uh, here we have widget lock screen, and we have a Zuper widget date and time up over here. We've got some weather over here. We've got a battery monitor. We have Metaballs running in the background. This is one of the live wallpapers that's in Metaballs. We've got the standard Jelly Bean Unlock. And here we've got my home screen. We've got AccuWeather. And we just have a very simple clock. Uh, over here, another Zuper widget that's, handled, that's mentioning the memory and the size of the onboard memory and the SD card. And over here, it's pretty plain. Here's a good look at the live wallpaper. You can interact with the balls. You can bounce them. You can split them up if they're big. You can just cut through it like that and break them up. It's a really nice wallpaper. I really like this scheme. And as you can see from the swiping over here, it's, it's pretty responsive. We can come into the app drawer. And actually, before I do that, I'll show you guys the launcher. The launcher for this is just uh, the standard trebuchet. I've also loaded Smart Launcher, but Smart Launcher is, is really very simple. It's, it's more for phones. It's not really a tablet one. It just gives you some quick shortcuts. It doesn't even have alternate screens. It does, however, organize your app drawer by uh, phone-related apps or just standard some world internet apps. It knows games. It actually picked up the games pretty well. Um, media related apps, utilities, and things that handle settings. So we'll go ahead and bring it back to my standard launcher, which is just the stock Jelly Bean one. And as you can see here, pretty responsive. So first I'll take you into the settings, show you a little bit about this particular tablet. St fairly standard CyanogenMod type uh, settings over here. Lock screen, it does uh, have some theming and there's another theme that I've loaded. Under system for this. You can modify a status bar, a notification drawer, the wallpaper, some items on the power menu, which I'll go ahead and actually include the screenshot. You can switch profiles. Here are some profiles over here, your typical sound profiles. These are not to be confused with user profiles that some of the tablets are doing now. Uh, actually going to turn off GPS. Security, some things like on the lock screen, of course installing from unknown sources, what type of screen lock, language and input. Uh, I have the KII keyboard running on this one. This is the uh, KII keyboard that is for free on the market. It's made by a member of the XDA community. And uh, we'll see if I can show you an example of the KI keyboard. Customization will show you some of the skins 
and then you can go to test. I'm running the stone bold. Well, actually, maybe not. Hold on one second. I forgot. I have to set it to default after I accidentally unclicked it. So here is Stone Bowl. This is what it looks like. And the sounds are the same. It's just the typical ice cream sandwich sounds. This does not have a sound option. And it does not do swiping. And you get access to the settings right over here. So you can kind of adjust it from wherever you are. Now if you wanted to see a different theme for it. If you just hit preview, preview is kind of not that good on this. It's just you can see how tiny that is over there. But um, let's apply it. And this is going to be the high contrast theme. Again, standard kind of ice cream sandwich, jelly bean looking. Nothing particularly fancy over here. I might not stick with KII keyboard for very long. It's, it's just kind of simple. And your typical accounts, date and time, developer options. You get the warning of, you know, here there might be dragons and stuff when you go in. Uh, you can set the stay awake. A couple other things, Android debugging, mock locations. Your standard developer options. You can go to performance. Now this one, we'll, we'll get into the stock uh, CPU and everything for this device when I show you the Antutu on it. So you can have the performance options about tablet. You can see over here standard options there, Cyanogen mod related versions, Android 4.1.2 which is a Jelly Bean one. There's the kernel version. Memory build date over here in November. Now this one's stock comes with 32 gigs on board, comes with the typical SD slot, and I've got a 32 gig in there, and it runs at a 1 gig clock screen, uh, clock CPU. However, for this particular ROM that is loaded, I've got it changed. And as you can see here, it's a dual core machine. The CPU range that I'm running for it now is 312 megabytes up to an overclock of 1.4 gigs. Screen resolution is 1280 by 752. It's an NVIDIA Tegra 2. It does support OpenGL ES. There's the memory. The RAM is close to a gig. The camera is a 5 megapixel. And of course, I've got it on Jelly Bean. Now, if you want to look at the score of this particular Antutu over here, 67.62. Um, that is a jump of about 1,700 from where it first scored. When I had it on Honeycomb, it ranked at about 5,000. And over here, as you can see, it's ranking at 6.7. So I'll go ahead and show you where it falls on the chart. You've got the LG Optimus G, the Nexus 4, the Galaxy Note 2, which is doing very well, Galaxy 3. The Transformer Prime. This used to be king about a year, maybe a year and a half ago. And then here we are. So it's a little, it's on par with the Galaxy Nexus and a little below a Galaxy S2, considerably below a Note and Transformer Prime. So this isn't too bad for a Tegra 2 device. And here's the ranking HTC One X. It's currently ruling charts over here there's a score so as you can see as it's going through the app drawer over here it is moving along pretty quick a uh, there you can see out on the Google Play Store now the PlayStation portable emulator I haven't really been able to get it work on anything. I tried it first on this device. It wasn't really loading any ROM that I threw at it. It just was really, really slow. So I loaded it on the Toshiba. Actually, the Nexus 7, which is one of the most powerful devices I've got. And it couldn't do anything over there either. So I don't know if anybody's gotten this thing to run. Or maybe it's just me, but it's not running very well. 
Uh, default apps that tend to come installed on an idea pad is uh, Angry Birds was on it, the Congregate Arcade, eBuddy, um, the File Manager, Galaxy on Fire 2 was installed, all these HW games was installed, uh, Goo Manager came with the ROM. Here are the two Minibowl wallpapers that I have. These are actually different versions and they have uh, different options. But Minibowl is, is really actually a fun uh, wallpaper over here. And uh, shouldn't be giving me that expired message on that. But um, Minibowl is a pretty cool wallpaper. There's the battery widget that you saw on the lock screen. Uh, it comes with this drawing pad as a default IBM app. Now there are several IBM apps that actually don't work anymore if you try to pull them up. Um, the Lenovo App Store, I believe, was one of them. That one, you go to it and it's like, yeah, we don't have any more options. So if you happen to pick one of these now, just realize that um, some of the apps won't work anymore. Honeycomb is pretty old, and, and that was the generation this came from, and I think IBM decided to kill uh, some of their offerings online and everything and maybe roll them into just the Google Play Store or something like that. Uh, let's go ahead and bring up M-Spot Movies, which is a default Lenovo app. Yeah, and it, it tells you that it has to upgrade, so you hit OK, and if you go to the Play Store... get out see no longer available on Lenovo devices that's pretty much what you run into with a lot of the standard ones so if you do pick up one of these idea pads check out the link in the description I will have the ROM that I'm running and I'll have the root kit that I use it I mean really you'd be stupid to get one of these and not root it and take it up to Jelly Bean because you're gonna take it from an outdated kind of pokey eh, middle of the road almost a nothing tablet to something that really stands up i mean this this does get a lot better when you're on jelly bean uh this weather app that i've been trying called eye in the sky pretty neat little weather app you can change the icon themes over here this one's kind of fun so there you go there's an ibm lenovo idea pad k1 32 gig on board, 32 expandable storage. It has a default clock speed of 1 gigahertz, and you can overclock it fairly well. As a matter of fact, let's go and see if I've got something that'll give me the options here for the overclocking. Actually, I'll just go to settings and the performance, and we can show you that way, the available clock speed. So go to settings, go to performance. Yeah, yeah. Here, there might be dragons. And on this ROM, 1400 would be the max. So that's a, that's a pretty decent overclock available for it. And uh, it, it really showed up well on Antutu. It, it, it came up pretty far, it took a nice jump. So. There you go again, an idea pad K1 by Lenovo. Uh, I'll show you the sides of it over here. On the, you've got the power button. You've got volume up, volume down. Big enough space between power and the volume rocker, so that you can uh, really feel where you're going. You've got a rotation lock. On top, you have nothing. On this side, you have nothing, and on the bottom is where the power port is, and uh, also you've got the SD slot over here. It's kind of hard to see in the uh, darkness, over, but it's down on the lower left side, and uh, it's it's a nice tablet. It's got a rubbery back that has a decent grip. You're you're not going to be able to sling the thing around and not lose your grip on it, but. Um, unlike the Toshiba x it's not an aluminum back, it's rubbery, and it, it does provide a reasonably firm grip. And you've got the front camera up here along with the ambient light sensor. So, thanks for checking out a, another tablet video here on Tim's Tech Corner. Hope you enjoy, and this is still worth uh, a purchase if you can get it for about $175, $150 or lower. Thanks a lot, and take care.